Welcome back to chapter five, where we are seeing another example of how to use our understanding of friction in force problems that look very similar to chapter four. All right, so in this example, we are pulling a block up an incline, but the force that we are applying to it is also angled. So a lot of students in chapter four and in chapter five get a little bit stuck when there's multiple angles involved, so it's always good to see more of these examples. So our pull force is also angled relative to the incline at this 20 degree angle. And the slide had this picture, but it's always good to draw it out ourselves to kind of center our focus on the example at hand. So 10 kilograms and mu k here is 0 0.3. With every force problem that we do, we want to draw a free body diagram. And with a ramp, we know that we're going to want to tilt our coordinate system. So it's good to draw it near the ramp so that we know what we're doing, uh, along the ramp, although that's not very well drawn, <laughs> and perpendicular to it. Having it next to the free body diagram helps us recognize how to draw the arrows um, at the different angles that we tend to draw them. So gravity straight down here. So gravity is mg 10 times 9.8, 98 newtons. So then we have the normal force that's perpendicular to the ramp in our tilted y direction and the force of gravity. So in the y direction, we go away from the normal force. And then for the x component, we go down the ramp. We practice this several times we always want to make sure that we recognize that. This is going to be a 25 degree angle, just because the ramp is that 25 degree angle. Now we also have a pull force, so F pull of 90 degrees, uh, 90 newtons rather, and um, there's going to be this 20 degree angle. Now we can, if it's easier for us, draw these components on the picture itself to help recognize that there is a piece that goes up the ramp and there is a piece that goes away from the ramp. We're kind of lifting it off the ramp a bit. For those, we call them Fy and Fx. And then finally, because there is a coefficient of friction, that means we know that there is a friction force. And that friction force is equal to that coefficient times the normal force. Okay. So the free body diagram really is meant to be our full map of the problem. And so one thing that may be useful, you may be doing this already, and sometimes I remember to do it and sometimes I don't. But labeling which parts are sine and cosine right here in the picture where we have the triangles right in front of us. So the x component of our pull force is 90 cosine 20 degrees because we're adjacent to the angle, but the x component of gravity is 98 sine 25 degrees because we're opposite where that angle is. The y component of our pull force then is opposite the angle, so it's sine 20 degrees. And as has always been the case with ramps, the y component of gravity is adjacent to the angle, and so it has been and continues to be the cosine component for the gravity triangle. All right, so we have this lovely map laid out for us. We know that the first thing we need to do, even though it wasn't specifically asked for, is we need to find the normal force. And in these problems, what that has meant is looking in the y direction because that's the direction that the normal force is. So in this case, the acceleration in the y direction is zero. We see this a lot because we tend to have objects moving horizontally, but we always, always want to start at the beginning because that won't be the case 100% of the time. There will be situations where we are moving vertically, and so the acceleration in the y direction might be the acceleration we're looking for. And we don't want to ever jump to conclusions just because we're trying to cut corners. 
So because it's zero, we can write everything equal to zero and focus on things that point in the same direction will have the same sign and things that point in the opposite direction will have an opposite sign. So here we have the normal force plus 90 sine 20 degrees minus 98 cosine 25 degrees. And all of that came from our beautiful map, the free body diagram. And so when we solve this, we get all those numbers and get them to the other side. We get that the normal force is equal to 58.0 newtons. So now we move on to the x direction. So now we're trying to find the acceleration. So we'll do that the net force in the x direction is mass times the x acceleration we're looking for. And now we see we've got three forces, the x component of our pull, the x component of gravity, and friction. We need the forces in the direction of acceleration, so that's fx, minus forces opposite the, the direction of acceleration. That's the component of gravity is trying to pull us downhill, and friction is trying to pull us downhill. And all of that is equal to 10a. So we can plug in what we've got here. 90 cosine 20 degrees minus 98 sine 25 degrees minus, so mu k given in the problem is 0.3. And the normal force we use right now is 58.0. And all of that is equal to 10A. We can plug that entire left side into our calculator, and we will get 25.8 equals 10A. So when we divide both sides by 10, we will get the answer 2.58 meters per second squared is our final answer for the acceleration A. So we check to see if this makes sense. This is well within the range of accelerations we're used to seeing for these kinds of problems. And um, we identify that there's, there's nothing particularly tricky to this problem if we are applying these tricks that we know we always have to apply. When we have forces at angles, we break them up into components. In this case, there were two separate forces at angles that each had their own angle to deal with. When we have an ang uh, a incline or ramp, we tilt our coordinate system. We did that here. And when we have the full idea of friction, we know that the first thing we have to do is find the normal force, even though that's not being asked for in the problem. So. The most core concept I really need us to get out of all these example problems is that the process that we use, the step-by-step -step process of just taking each situation as a new situation that applies the exact same skills, that is the most important thing that we can do to understand these chapters. We do not want to try to, when we find a block, um, going up an incline problem on the homework, immediately hope that it's identical to the block going up an incline problem in the lecture videos. That isn't the point of these examples. The point of these examples is to see how we apply the same process to different situations and what we do when we come across specific sticking points. And those sticking points might come up over and over again, but in a new and different example. So I will see you in those last two example problems for the chapter.